Hello, welcome to this Crest Explained video. I'm Caitlin Brown, Crest Product Manager at the British Science Association, and today I'm going to be talking through the Crest criteria. Now, this video will primarily be relevant to uh, those who are undertaking silver and gold Crest awards. However, the criteria are also the same for bronze awards, and so there may be some relevance here. Um, the reason I'm focusing on silver and gold Crest awards is because they are assessed by our trained assessors on our online platform. Um, so, so there's a bit more uh, detail needed for those. Um, so the 15 criteria, which you can find uh, in our help centre or and also in the Crest profile form, which I'll cover in a little bit. Um, uh, as you can see here, are the same for uh, bronze, silver and gold um, and, and are met at different uh, levels in different ways. Um, so as you can see, they're split into different areas. So there's planning the project, throughout the project, finalising the project and project wide criteria. So there's different areas. Um, and with all these levels, uh, uh, they must always uh, comply with any relevant legislation, uh, for example, data collection has to comply with the data protection laws uh, and also animal testing and the safe disposal of materials. Um, and we always refer to CLEEPS on all matters of health and safety and you can access the CLEEPS student safety sheets here um, and those are really helpful and you don't need to log in and you don't need to pay to access those, so those are really good. So we often get asked uh, how the criteria differ for silver and gold awards and the best way to explain it is probably in the level of detail that is required at each level. So uh, in our help notes for both silver and gold, I've opened up the criteria that focuses on research. Um, so as you can see uh, in this help note, we have the uh, example of the criteria, then there's a little bit more explanation in the uh, second column of the table. And then finally, there's an example um, and we have the same again for Crest Gold. Um, and it's worth noting that uh, the examples uh, provided in these tables are from real student projects, um, but each example is taken from a, a, a project where they did this particularly well. Um, so they're not from the same project and, and you can't use these examples to say, OK, this is exactly how a project should be done. So that's worth bearing that in mind. So you'll see at silver level, um, obviously the criteria is the same. Um, but as we outline in the uh, second column, uh, it's essentially making clear that uh, where the sources are from. So it might be footnotes um, or it might be a bibliography, but we typically wouldn't necessarily expect or require um, inline references. Um, and that's ref uh, reflected in the fact that a bibliography is there in the example. So if a student, um, they might say, oh, you know, we're using this first uh, bullet point, you know, uh, Dessler. Um, 2015, they might reference that in their work, but the key thing is having the bibliography at the end. If we look at Crest Gold, so um, actually there's a little less text here, but again, we've got the explanation of the criteria. So um, the extensive research, and again, that feeds into the 70 hours really that are approximately required for the project. Um, and then we would expect a consistent referencing style to be used throughout. So at gold level, we would expect in-text references or footnotes. Um, either one is fine. Um, so then for the example, obviously, you can see that this person has opted for uh, in-text references. Um, they've got Timio and Gentili et al, 1979. And then further down, there's another example of this criteria being met. So that's a really good example of how uh, Crest Silver and Gold can differ slightly from each other. It's very much in the amount of detail that is required at these levels. And this is reflected in the other criteria too. So we're going to look at some of the criteria that uh, students typically uh, struggle with a little bit more based on what we've looked at in terms of who uh, meets what criteria. So the first criteria we're going to look at is uh, the one that looks at um, the student identifying a range of approaches uh, to the project. So this criteria, as we say in the explanation first column there, uh, isn't about the different methods that are potentially um, available to the student and that they might look at, although that might be part of it. It's looking overall at the different methods that the student might take uh, for the whole project. So that's really worth bearing in mind when you're kind of uh, doing this criteria, looking at how you can meet it. 
and that you can see in the uh, breakdown column, uh, we explain a little bit further. So it says the student identified a range of possible relevant approaches to achieving their aim. So uh, as with all of the criteria, um, it's really important to uh, meet as many as possible. Obviously, you need 11 of the 15. Um, but actually, if you haven't set a clear aim in the first place, which is a criteria higher up the list, then it's going to be a lot harder for you to um, identify a range of approaches. And actually, if I scroll down slightly here, you'll see the next criteria is describing your plan for the project and then why you chose that approach. So that's again really tied into this one if if the student hasn't identified the different range of approaches how can they then justify the approach they've taken so you'll see for silver um that uh there's quite a lot of detail here and we've used the crisp example again um, and they've really considered in this example um maybe they can do some surveys um or they've then said further on down here maybe they could carry out practical experiments and that is something that ties into a different help note, which outlines the different types of CREST projects that be, can be completed. Um, and you'll see in this article, um, we outline uh, the different projects you could do. So like a practical project, which is pretty much what it says on the tin. So, you know, something with a practical investigation and experiment, probably. There's also design and make projects. Um, a good example of that would be our um, design and make your own pizza box project. Obviously, that's uh, quite hands on. Then a research project, which is particularly good for students who are, say, doing this without a teacher and might not have access to a lab. Uh, that will be purely based on research. And then a communication project, which kind of looks at different ways that you might communicate uh, a, a difficult scientific topic, topic to a specific audience. So that's kind of what thinking about the different methods might also involve, you know, those different ways. And there's lots of things to consider there. And then you'll see for the gold criteria, again, we link to the different types of CREST project. And if I scroll up here, we look at the potential methods and then the students just gone into more detail. And that's, again, the difference between the, the, the silver and gold criteria, usually the, the level of detail that's required. Um, and so they've looked at the positives, the, the negatives. Um, and then again, another method and then the positives and the negatives. So that's really a key, a key way of doing this. And I think students probably struggle with this because um, it's just thinking about uh, uh, the, the different approaches you could take on a broader scale. And as I said at the beginning, not thinking about um, the, the specific experiments that you might do and how they might be done differently. It's thinking about your project as a whole. So the second criteria that I'm going to focus on today is uh, identifying and overcoming problems successfully. So I think this uh, criteria can sometimes be misunderstood in the sense that students sometimes feel that they want their project to be perfect. And so they don't want to talk about the problems they had or uh, they just talk about what went well and they don't focus on what might have gone badly. Um, and this is a really important criteria because it's really where you show a lot of ownership over your project. Um, and that's something that the assessors are looking for. Uh, with all Crest projects because that's really the key to Crest. So I've pulled out the examples with Crest Silver and Gold. And as we've uh, mentioned here, it's highly unlikely that a project is problem free. And actually the odds are if your project did go very smoothly, that's likely due to planning uh, on your part. And uh, maybe, you know, a student did a bronze award before they did a silver award and they really learned from their previous experience. So these are all things to pull out really in the Crest project um, and something that the assessors are really looking for. As I said, it's how you show ownership of the project. Um, and essentially, you know, it, this also ties into the different types of Crest project because actually students might have a problem in the sense that they might have to change approaches halfway through because they realise um, I don't have access to practical equipment anymore, so I can't do my experiments. So I'm going to have to do a survey instead. These are all really valid parts of the project process. No project starts off perfect. It goes through phases of planning and change. Um, and that's what the Crest assessors are looking for. So for my final point, I'm going to have a look at a final thing that we quite often get asked about in terms of meeting the Crest criteria. Um, and that is uh, what project work should be submitted um, to obviously help demonstrate which criteria are met. So I'm going to open the student profile form. I'm in the Crest resource library. You'll see in the URL bar, I'm in the secondary library um, and I've scrolled down to silver. So I'll just open the profile form. Now the profile form is a required part of each student's submission. So even if a student has worked in a group, 
um, they still each student still needs to submit a profile form of their own um, and that's because it's a really essential part of showing how each student has actually met those criteria themselves and how each student has met that 10 30 or 70 approximately hours uh, on their crest project so just to quickly touch on something on the front page, there's obviously a section for a mentor name um, and we'll look at mentors in another how to video. But actually, it is really worth mentioning that although uh, we do strongly recommend um, a mentor at uh, gold level and they're suggested at silver, um, they are not a requirement and students will not not achieve their Crest Award just because they don't have a mentor. So that is really something to bear in mind. So going to the uh, main page of the profile form, so you'll see uh, on, on these pages that the criteria for Crest are obviously laid out. And that's why the profile form is so important, because it's a way for students to show how they've met these criteria. So you'll see in the middle column uh, that actually it's how do you show the criteria in the work that you've submitted? Um, and then you specifically uh, uh, direct the assessor to the page and paragraph where uh, you think that you've met this criteria. So this is really key because actually sometimes we get a lot of different project work submitted, which is obviously what we're discussing now. Um, and the profile form is something that uh, really brings that work together. Um, and in terms of what project work we want submitted, it can be anything from uh, a video, a PowerPoint, a uh, written report, um, a series of blog posts, photos. It can really be any kind of work, but it needs to be cohesive. And that's why the profile form is so important, because it, it does part of the work for you. Um, and particularly for students who submit a lot of different work. It makes life easier for the assessor who goes, OK, I'm looking at page two. I'm looking for paragraph five. Have they met this criteria? Yes, great. They've done that. If the students direct you to somewhere and that doesn't really seem to meet the criteria, the assessor will look elsewhere, but they'll know that that's probably the main place that this, the student thinks they've met it. Um, so that's really worth bearing in mind uh, with that. And you'll see the final column is for optional notes to the assessor. So that's just in case uh, you forget to add anything into the report or whatever work is submitted. So that's everything on the Crest criteria. Thanks for listening today. Um, if you do have any further questions, please do email us on crest at britishscienceassociation.org. Thanks for listening to this Crest Explained video.